what's up we're here in thailand today like always but trust me today it's not about the beaches mountains or Pattai. today we're testing this bad boy here the viltrox 27 millimeter f 1.2 for fujifilm x mount you know, there is something magical about Fujifilm. They have this knack for turning our shots into throwback masterpieces with their film simulations. And I would say that's what led them to be more of hobbyist cameras for a long time. But since Fujifilm released the X-H2S and X-H2, it's not just about those nostalgic fields anymore. It's about Fujifilm going pro, taking the big leap. But bodies alone are not enough. And that's where Wiltrox recognized a big opportunity as they already showed with the 13mm f1.4 and their other pro line lens, the 75mm f1.2 and there it is, another great lens by Viltrox for the Fujifilm system, the Viltrox 27mm f1.2. Imagine you're on a trip, you know, the usual stuff that everyone does here in Thailand, filming temples etc. The first thing with this lens that you notice is that it's weighty. Definitely chunkier than the more petite Fujifilm 27mm f2.8 or my 23mm f2 here. 560 gram to be exact, thanks to being all metal. But here's the thing, holding it, you just get the sense that it's like, I, I don't know, the Tor's hammer of medium focal length lenses. I wouldn't actually smash it like Tor does, but you get what I mean. It's solid. Weather sealed, that's important. And of course, a very nice and clicked yet smooth aperture ring. It's such a comforting sound. Now onto specs, this gem is a 27mm, but put it on Fujifilm's 1.5x APS-C crop sensors and it becomes a 40.5mm full frame equivalent lens. Why is that important? Well, everyone always says that 50mm in full frame is actually closest to what our eyes see, but the correct number is actually 42 because that is the cone of visual attention. So the 40.5mm focal length is actually even closer to that, plus it's a tech wider than your usual nifty 50. Now, before I use this lens, I actually thought that I would prefer 35mm full frame equivalent or 23 in APS-C, but I was actually positively surprised because there were situations where I thought before shooting that I would have to step a bit back or use a wider lens, but I always got the exact frame that I imagined and also the opposite was true, like sometimes I thought that I would still be a bit too far away, but then after getting the shot, I was perfectly happy with that. So these 40.5 millimeters is actually a very nice focal length in my opinion, and it is certainly something that I will use more in the future. Now here's a feature I had my fingers crossed for when I heard the first rumors of this lens, and that's a 67 millimeter filter thread. Lucky for me, and maybe for you too, this lens delivers on that front. You you see, most of my lenses rock the 67mm filter thread <laughs> and with the new Viltrox 27mm joining the club, I can keep my trusty filters in the game. Thanks Viltrox, you saved me some money with this one. Back to our Thai adventure, the scanning the temple steps, hitting a market that's all kind of alive, this lens is a sharpness monster. Even at f1.2 things pop, it's like watching the market in IMAX. You can literally smell the food through the lens, that's how sharp it is. Now I'm not buying an f1.2 lens to shoot at f4 except for landscape shots, but if you do shoot at f4, razor sharp. And for those of you who are all about the details, again, landscape photographers mainly, shoot now frame later, guys. Yes, it resolves the 40 megapixels of powerhouses like the X-H2 and X-T5. Maybe it could even resolve more, it's pretty sharp. So Fujifilm, maybe we need 50 megapixels. Just kidding, I prefer dynamic range and low light over megapixels, but it's great to have that. 40 megapixels with such a sharp lens, it's incredible. I love that by myself, especially when I shoot time lapses. And talking about f1.2, let's also talk about the Booker. And there's a little quirk. You see those market lights in the background. They've got this cat-eyed, maybe a little whimsical Booker thing going on on the edges while being perfectly round in the middle. Now, that can be seen as artsy, but might not be everyone's cup of tea. Or coffee. Oh, that's a good one, but hot. 
Back to the lens is Booker. While the Booker bolts are only great in the middle, the Booker overall is extremely pleasing. It's smooth, it transitions well into the out of focus areas and you get a lot of it, so there's not much more to wish for. And there's also little to non-chromatic aberrations. You might get some in certain situations, but you really have to look for it. And in all the normal shots that I took, I did not notice any at all. So that's really good performance. But of course, in extreme situations, if you zoom a lot in, you might see it a little bit. It performs similar in terms of focus breathing. You can notice a good amount of focus breathing when you fully focus in and out, but I've seen much worse and under real life conditions you don't see it that much. So whether it's that market hustle or monk doing his walking meditation thing, your footage stays pretty smooth compared to many other lenses, but don't expect cinema performance in that regards. The autofocus overall works good and reliable. You can certainly call it an autofocus lens and not an out of focus one, <laughs> but you might get a bit of focus stepping here and there as it is with many lenses on Fujifilm, unfortunately. It's subtle compared to some other lenses though. <coughs> yeah. oh, hope that's not COVID. So also a bit better performing in that regards. Tested it with a dog actually today with the animal eye detection and I was actually surprised how good it worked even on the X-T5 and not even the X-H2S. Another tiny hiccup when it comes to focusing on this lens is close-ups. This lens asks your subject to keep social distancing of about 28 centimeters. So if you're planning to get up close and personal with something, you might need to play it cool and stay back a tad. Speaking of sun stars, this lens doesn't quite steal the spotlight in that area. It delivers passable sun stars at around f5.6, but the more you open the aperture, the less impressive they get, so quite contrary to other lenses. So you might want to consider other options in that regards. All right, it's time to wrap this up. We've got the heart and soul of Fujifilm's winter charm and the muscle of modern pro-level gear now. The result, a lens that's not just another fun little street photography tool, but can be seen as a small evolution of the Fujifilm system. I mean, you can have a pro body such as the X-H2S, what I'm shooting on right now, grab lenses such as the Viltrox 27mm for professional shoots and go hiking on the weekend with your lightweight Fujifilm 23mm and some others. So this system increasingly gives you all in one, the nostalgic fun of Fujifilm and also the professionalism of modern cameras and lenses. But what about the price? The Viltrox 27mm f1.2 comes in at... I don't know. <laughs> I think probably anywhere between $500 and $600 like the 75mm and I think I don't have to mention that this will be a steal. So if you're mulling over whether to make this lens your new partner in crime, I would not hesitate and I can already say that I will use this lens a lot in the future for my b-roll shots. But remember, gear is just a tool. It's the stories that you tell and the moments that you capture that truly matter. So keep exploring, keep creating and make every shot count. See you next time.